let's try to solve the Atwood machine problem and uh, I shall just go through this slowly because in spite of the fact that it's a very simple problem it becomes a very important problem so the picture looks uh, familiar uh, there is a pulley and um, I'm looking at the picture which says that the mass of the pulley is now known and most of the previous times one would say that the pulley is massless we no longer do that this happens to be the pivot point of the pulley and uh, the most important thing in the problem for new thing in the problem is that the pulley is now going to be under pure rotation and uh, the other thing is that there is a string that is passing over the pulley uh, bad diagram and um, on this side as well it should be tangential sorry and um, there are two masses this one is being called m1 in the textbook and this is being called m2 okay what I shall do is I shall take care to try my best to keep to this sign convention right so now this one more aspect which you should not miss is that there is this rotation is caused due to friction between the um, rope and pulley and then there's more to this in spite of that to make the problem simple we shall assume no slip between the rope and pulley so under these assumptions we shall now solve the problem so all these aspects are new to you right and this is going to become important because we're going to use this as one of the constraints in the problem right so in all previous problems we assume that there is no friction and therefore there is slip and in fact there is so much slip that the pulley does not rotate the pulley remains stationary in this case um, these are the conditions so what are the equations that we can write under these assumptions um, let's draw the free power diagram of the pulley the pulley is um, acted upon by a force which is coming from the support the reaction force but the reaction force passes through the pivot point and therefore has no torque about the pivot point and probably this R is not going to trouble us but we can find the value of R I think at the end of the day if we want the rope on the left applies a force of T1 and the rope on the right also applies a force um, T2 mind you T1 is not equal to T2 anymore that was under the assumption that um, there is no friction and the difference in T1 and T2 will cause we will see now a torque on the pulley and this causes the pulley to in fact have a angular acceleration alpha which happens to be a constant we'll see um, in this problem which can be predicted by Newton's laws so what is the equation we have uh, okay so let's see the torque due to T1 is positive I'm going to just stick to the sign convention the torque due to T1 is positive and uh, why is it positive because it seems to rotate the pulley in the anti-clockwise direction and it happens to be equal to T1R the torque due to T2 is going to be negative so I'm now respecting the sign convention it's also equal to T2R and this torque this is the total torque on the pulley will be equal to I alpha that's our main equation and um, this is now going to be R into T1 minus T2 
an I if you want I think it's MP mass of the pulley okay let me write it here for your reference into R square by 2 where R is the radius of the pulley already shown on the figure into alpha and this happens to be our first equation not too bad up front we've got to the main equation right so, and there's a mass here now which is acted upon by a force T1 this is familiar and then there is this mass happens to be M1 so there's the downward force equal to M1 G and then this is the free body diagrams please note that this particular page is all about free body diagrams and of course these two are equal because of Newton's third law equal and opposite because of Newton's third law and now shall we also finish writing down the equations of the Newton's third law for the free body diagram we've just written so again I'm respecting the sign convention T1 minus M1 G is equal to M1 A1 mind you uh, we don't worry about the sign of A1 because it's an unknown but what is known is T1 and M1 and therefore the signs have been given now there is a similar equation here which is the same as T2 minus M2G is equal to M2A2 so the famous Atwood machine is proving out to be fairly simple and um, so far we made quick progress so we can call this as equation 1 we can call this as equation 2 we can call this as equation 3 and I think we've exhausted our physics and it's time to now count the unknowns so let me see um, where should I write it maybe I can write it here in white there is T1 there is T2 there is alpha and then there is A1 and there is A2 clearly um, we have got the list right and it seems to me that there are um, five unknowns and how many equations just three but one constraint is very easy and it's the same as we've done previously so maybe I should not discuss that um, so there is a fourth equation which is very easy that is a1 equal to minus a2 once again respecting the sign convention here because if one of them is positive then the other is negative and this gives me my fourth equation pretty easy and this means that if we have one more equation we are done and this last equation happens to be perhaps the most interesting part of the problem which is the constraint equation and I think um, we are almost done we made a big deal of this problem uh, once again I repeat it's an important problem but not at all difficult okay but the last constraint is new and needs to be done with some care so let me try and once again this time I want to do it so carefully that I also respect the sign convention okay so let's assume that um, this is the diagram of the pulley and uh, the origin is here and uh, this is the x-axis y-axis but most importantly this origin is the pivot point for the pulley now if the um, okay here's I just just going to draw um, rather magnified image of the rope okay right this is just a magnified image so this is a point on the rope and um, this white point is in the pulley now they're very close to each other they're touching at that instant okay freeze time this seems to be one of the things that we are adopting to understand now the yellow point and the white point if there is no slip between the rope and the pulley then the point on the rope rope velocity at yellow point is equal to pulley velocity velocity at um, white point and the reason is that there is no slip I mean that's an assumption that the rope does not slip on the pulley 
Now the yellow velocity happens to be at that instant the velocity of v1 yeah the velocity of v1 the white velocity is going to use a formula from rotational kinematics remember that the pulley is undergoing um, pure rotation uh, so let me write it properly this is a pulley and this is a pure rotation and therefore the white point is undergoing a circular motion and therefore I shall use rotational kinematics to get the instantaneous velocity of the white point of the pulley which happens to be r this is r this is the radius r omega at that instant of time so v1 at the okay now this equation has to respect the coordinate system respect the sign convention sorry so if omega is positive for us as per our sign convention if omega is positive then the pulley is rotating in the anti-clockwise direction and if the pulley is rotating in the anti-clockwise direction then the rope will have to go in the negative direction so in other words what I'm saying is in as per the sign convention if omega is positive implies v1 is negative now because of this I shall confidently change this to this equation so I have modified the sign of this equation by thinking in terms of my uh, thinking in terms of my sign convention so the constraint equation finally uh, taking into account the sign convention is minus v1 t is equal to r into omega of t but we want the constraint in terms of accelerations as we have done so far in all the Newton's laws problems so she'll differentiate this so this becomes minus a1 is equal to r alpha right so this is the final equation equation number five and this has to be solved along with all the previous four equations so just to get all the equations on uh, one uh, page here I'm going to add the fifth equation here and I'm trying to memorize it minus a1 is equal to r alpha let me just check yeah okay so minus a1 is equal to r alpha this is equation 5 and that's it the problem is solved this is a good achievement for us I think we've been systematic I'm leaving out the algebra for you please do the algebra and check your answers with the answer on page number 254 and 255 page number 254 and 255 in K&K &K. and um, if you get the right algebra right that's pretty good so we are done with a fair number of problems in um, pure rotation it's time to switch to the final topic which is fixed axis rotation and uh, I shall um, um, start with the theory of the fixed axis rotation it's a little bit of work but uh, we're now nearing the end of an important topic